Hello, good day everyone, and welcome ulit sa ating YouTube channel si Corner TV. So, bilang continuation ng ating uh, video lectures regarding uh, fundamentals of geotechnical engineering, ang topic natin today is uh, compressibility of soil considering the consolidation settlement. So, kung bago pa lang sa channel na to, please like and subscribe to my channel. So, yun. Ang topic natin today is uh, consolidation settlement. So, ano yung ine-expect natin na aralin natin dito? No? So, these are the things that we will learn dito sa topic natin. So, things to learn on this topic, define soil compressibility at foundation settlement. So, dito kasi, <clears throat> these, are, these are one of the important topic that we have to discuss when we are studying the technical engineering. Bakit? Uh, dito lang kasi natin chinecheck kung ano yung possible na maging settlement ng foundation na dinidesign natin as civil engineer. So, pag sinabi natin settlement or compressibility ng soil, ito yung pagbaba ng foundation natin or pag settle niya or pag lubog uh, in a long run or let's say in a few weeks or few months na kung saan, in reality, uh, if yung settlement or yung possible settlement ng design natin ng building or any structure is masyadong malaki, uh, we have to uh, lessen that dun sa design pa lang natin. Okay? So again, pag sinabi natin settlement, in Tagalog term, siya yung pagbaba ng foundation. Uh, later on, magpapakita ako ng sample pictures or photo na kung saan papakita kung bakit hindi dapat or dapat ma-reduce natin yung settlement ng mga designs natin. Yung design na yun is syempre yung design ng foundation. So next, malalaman natin sa discussion natin today kung ano yung mga factors affecting the soil compression or yung settlement na ng foundation. Uh, yun na, check natin yung mamaya. Okay? Then yung definition ng primary consolidation settlement. And magbibigay siyempre, magbibigay din tayo ng mga sample problem regarding this topic. So after ng primary, we will discuss the secondary uh, consolidation settlement. So, okay. Let's start tayo. So, by book definition, soil compression is a decrease in soil of volume of soil due to the deformation of soil particles and expansion of water and air from void spaces due to increase in stress in soil. So, ang ibig lang sabihin dyan is, uh, yun niya, for example, uh, may, may, location ta may location tayo, may lupa tayo na pagtatayo ng any structure. Once na naglagay tayo ng kahit anong bigat doon, let's say foundation for residential houses or any structure, ang mangyayari doon, magkakaros ng decrease in volume kasi kung maaalala nyo, di ba, uh, yung mga soil particles natin na pinagtatayo natin ng kahit anong structure have void spaces, uh, spaces which is usually yung voids na yun it composed of water or air di ba? so dito once na nagkaroon ng uh, increase in pressure or naglagay tayo or nagpatong tayo ng kahit anuman dun sa lupang paggagawa natin ng structure magkakaroon ng increase dun ng sa stress ng soil which uh, causes yun niya, yung pag-compress so once na na-compress siya, ano mangyayari? of course, kung ano may nakapatong sa kanya magsisettle, depende kung gaano kalalim or kalaki yung naging decrease in volume kasi uh, once na nagkula ng stress increase dun sa soil particles natin, well obviously pag kinumpak mo siya, syempre yung void spaces niya, maratanggal or marireduce, like mawawala yung water and air, di ba? just like what we discussed dun sa soil compaction. Sa soil compaction, ang natatanggal dun is air, which is obviously, mas madaling tanggalin yung air kaysa sa water. Okay? So, kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, may nabanggit tayo regarding dun sa consolidation. So, mamaya, i-discuss ko kung ano yung difference ng consolidation tsaka sa compaction na discuss na natin before. So, ang idea lang dito, once nagkaroon ng stress increase dun sa soil natin, marireduce yung volume kasi marireduce yung volume ng voids meron yung soil particles natin. Okay? So, unwanted or uncontrolled decrease in volume may lead to settlement of foundation. So, yun niya, unwanted or uncontrolled na settlement, uh, 
malaki magiging epekto niya sa structure. If the settlement of foundation is not controlled or anticipated, major structural failure may, uh, may occur. occur. Okay? So, check natin yung photo mamaya. Yun. Oh. So, ito, sikat na sikat to, uh, Leaning Tower, di ba? So, luckily, yung nag-design nito, uh, ah, yung nag-build nito, uh, they manage to design yung structure, yung, yung foundation ng structure na ma-withstand yung possible na settlement dun sa pinagtatayo niya. Which is not on every case na kung saan kapag nag bumigay yung pinagpapatungan niya na lupa, ang tendency na mag-crack, no? So, dito sa case na to, <coughs> buti na lang, matiba yung structure na pinato, no? But, as a geotechnical engineer or civil engineer, what we're trying to gain here or, or to to get dito sa topic na to is uh, considering the design that we have, we have to reduce yung possible settlement. Kasi, Ang uh, idea lang is considering yung mga soil properties na i-discuss natin mamaya at saka mga formulas na ipapakita natin mamaya, kaya natin i-predict or uh, tansyahin kung ano yung uh, possible settlement ng foundation yan. So yung foundation na yun, pwedeng isolated, mat, or kahit ano na pinapatong sa lupa. Uh, in technical engineering, those can be predict predicted once meron tayo ng mga properties ng soil na we discuss natin mamaya, okay? So again, as civil engineer, we have to study the soil possible soil compression for us to anticipate or control yung possible settlement nung structure na itatayo natin dun sa mga project natin, okay? So isa yan sa mga tag ito, example, no? parang namali yung designer nung foundation yung naman na, na, na yung designer ng foundation kasi yung soil hindi na anticipate na possible na mag-tilt ng sobra dun sa isang side okay or mag compress ng sobra dun sa isang side okay so ito yung possible na mangyari sa isang structure once na nag-settle siya or bumaba okay or na compress sa loob ng bahay natin di ba so may lupa sa sa ilalim so pwedeng magkaroon ng uniform settlement so ibig sabihin yung all throughout ng soil sa ilalim ng uh, structure natin sabay-sabay sila yung mag-settle which in this case uh, di ko sinasabing good but uh, if the, the settlement of foundation is uniform then yung balance ng structure natin will be remained no? pero not all case hindi laging ganyan no? that's why yun nga sabi ko kanina our priority as designer as civil engineer is to make sure to na malesen yung possible settlement okay so ito namang uh, tipping settlement ito yung nangyari dun sa tower kanina no? sa linyo tower so dito sa side na to wala nang masyadong settlement and dito sa side na to malaki yung naging settlement so nagtilt siya so ikaw as so, a uh, property owner di ba as much as possible ay mangyayari sa ganun uh, sa structure mo to well of course tayo din as designer, ayaw natin makikita niyo yung structure natin na clipping nito. Actually, nakakatawag. Especially, habang tumataas yung structure natin, maramdaman natin na talagang nag-tip siya. Okay? So, the worst case is, if yung foundation natin, itong first two examples ng settlement natin, walang nangyari sa structure natin because the foundation or yung structure, yung putting natin na usually composed of uh, concrete, ring-first concrete lang, was designed no uh, uh, was designed well na kung saan kahit magkaroon siya ng settlement hindi siya basta-basta bibigay but but what if hindi na design ng maayos yung ano natin yung putting natin okay yung isolated putting natin yung tight tight views natin ito nagkaroon na ng yung sa tipi ng settlement nagkaroon na ng different settlement between uh, two two foundations so, since matiba yung foot putting na meron siya or grade beam na meron siya, nag lang siya yung buong structure. But what if yung putting natin or yung foundation natin is, is hindi ganun katiba yung reinforced concrete? So, dun papasok yung pag-crack from foundation pataas. So, dito, uh, though may mga remedies na na 
ginag uh, pa, uh, present uh, or technology na for this type of cracks. Pero syempre, ikaw as a designer, sabi ko nga kanina, you have to anticipate yung possible settlement. So, if it is not pa ano, uh, anticipated, the worst case scenario na possible na ma-encounter ng structure na dinisign mo, is yun niya, mag-crack or mahate. Starting from bottom to top. So, nakakatakot yan, no? So, <clears throat> Kapag yung structure mo, na-encounter ito, medyo delikado na yung license mo. Okay? Medyo delikado na. So, ano-ano ba yung mga possible settlement? Actually, these are the factors of uh, affecting yung soil compression or soil settlement. No? For example, meron tayong soil profile yan. No? Ito, uh, soil layer, pwedeng uh, clay yan, sand yan, or kahit ano. No? So, dito nung sa ilalim, clay layer. So, to be specific, kapag may clay layer doon sa ilalim ng foundation natin, we will uh, encounter, for sure, the consolidation settlement. Yun yung binabanggit ko kanina na primary consolidation, tsaka secondary consolidation. So, if again, if a clay layer, may encounter natin yun. So, ito nakasulat dito sa figure natin, consolidation settlement, Consolidation settlement if there is a presence of clay layer dun sa ilalim ng foundation natin. So, meron din tinatawag na elastic settlement which is, uh, hindi natin i-discuss muna dito. We will uh, provide separate video for this. But, in this topic, ang i-discuss lang muna natin is yung consolidation settlement. Pag sinabi natin consolidation settlement, yun yung pag-decrease ng volume ng clay layer meron dun sa ilalim or present dun sa ilalim ng foundation natin. So, if there's no clay layer dun sa ilalim ng foundation natin or let's say, itong buong soil profile na meron tayo sa site natin is puro, let's say, for granular soil or sand or gravel, no? Uh, hindi natin kailangan uh, no need na i-compute yung uh, consolidation settlement, no? But if present siya, which is usually laging meron, let's say, 90% talaga meron, no? We have to consider again itong consolidation settlement. Itong consolidation settlement na ito, nahahari ito sa dalawa, no? Yun yung nabanggit ko kanina, na kung saan yung consolidation settlement, meron siyang tinatawag na primary tsaka secondary settlement, okay? So, balik tayo dun sa mga factors na nakaka-apik dun sa settlement or compression ng soil na meron na pwede natin ma-encounter once na nagtayo na tayo ng structures dun sa mga projects na dinisign natin or gagawin natin. So first of course, nakaka-affect dun yung magnitude of load applied to the foundation. Pag sinabi natin magnitude of load, gano'n ba kabigat? No? Siyempre, the more na mabigat yung ipapatong natin dun sa lupa, no? so we can expect na mas nakokompress yung clay layer na meron tayo dun sa site natin. Okay? So the more na malaki, yung uh, i <coughs> ipapatong natin or mabigat, sorry, mas malaki yung chance na mag compress or mag settle yung foundation na meron tayo. Okay? So, ang idea lang, kapag mas malaki yung structure, ang kailangan lang natin gawin, mas malapad na foundation. But, that is not possible in all cases, especially if you have limited space. Okay? So, yun. Again, Uh, nakaka-apekto sa pag-settle ng foundation natin sa sa site natin is yung kung gano'ng kabigat or gano'ng kalaking structure na ipapatong natin dun sa soil natin. Okay? So, next is yung property of soil underneath the foundation natin. So, pag sinabi natin property, ito yung sinasabi natin na uh, dito, unit weight, no? Siyempre, si void ratio nandyan, okay? Uh, pwede rin uh, yung presence na ito ng ano, uh, saturated unit weight niya, gano'n, so specific gravity. So, alos lahat ng property na na-discuss natin dun sa mga previous sessions natin when we discuss the properties of soil. So, lahat yun magagamit natin dito. Okay? So, next, syempre, yung presence of clay layer. So, sabi ko nga kanina, if uh, yung foundation natin is uh, nakapatong or merong clay layer dun sa ilalim niya, then we will consider the consolidation settlement. 
So kung wala, hindi eh, walang consolidation settlement. Ang consider lang natin is elastic settlement. Bali, yung possible pala na maging total settlement, na we're going to discuss ko rin mamaya, eh syempre, consolidation settlement at elastic settlement. So elastic settlement, gagawa tayo ng separate video for this. So for now, we will focus on consolidation. So yun nga, presence of clay layer, nakaka-apekto siya. Kapag may clay layer sa ilalim ng structure natin, there is a big chance. Hindi pala, there is a big chance. There, there is a possible big uh, amount or uh, big uh, magnitude uh, ng um, settlement yung may encounter ng ano natin, ng structure natin. Okay? So again, presence of clay layer. So, next na nakaka is yung presence ng water table or kung may tubig ba sa ilalim ng structure natin. Okay? So, once na may water table yan, syempre, magiging saturated yung ilalim niya. No? So, ang idea lang, guys, kapag may presence ng tubig no, doon sa ilalim ng foundation natin, yung strength niya compare sa wala is bumababa. Okay? So, parang anong nangyayari dito, let's say, halimbawa, we have two separate sides, no? Uh, with uh, same, same uh, soil property. Kaso yung isa, may tubig or may presence ng water. Pag kinumpit mo yung bearing capacity or yung kakayahan niya na mag-resist ng load na ipapatong sa kanya, mas mahina yung kayang ibigay nung may presence ng tubig, no? So, yun. So, again, guys, Uh, the factors affecting the soil compression or soil settlement syempre, of course, yung una, yung load applied gano'n nga ba kabigat yung pinapatong dun sa, sa soil natin no? then syempre, yung properties ng soil like uh, void ratio specific unit weight uh, specific gravity or degree of saturation so lahat yun, kinakonsider natin when we uh, uh, when we compute yung possible settlement ng structure na dinidesign natin okay? so syempre, if there is a clay layer sa site natin, we will consider, syempre, yung consolidation settlement. If wala, edi eh wala, ang i-consider lang natin is yung possible elastic settlement. Okay? So, next is presence of water table. So, yung sabi ko nga kanina, if there is a water table doon sa, sa, sa project natin, yung resistance niya or yung kaya niya na mag-burn ng structure sa <coughs> sa ibabaw niya is much less compared dun sa walang tubig. Okay? So, medyo tricky or medyo uh, challenging kapag ikaw nag-design ka ng structure na malapit sa ilog or any body of water, no? Okay? So, next. So, settlement and foundation, yun yan, nabanggit, nabanggit ko kanina, it composes of consolidation settlement at uh, elastic settlement. Si consolidation settlement, applicable lang siya kung may clay layer doon sa soil profile ng pagtatayuan natin. Okay? So, sa si elastic settlement naman, uh, kahit anong ano yan, uh, kahit anong type ng soil, laging present siya. Okay? So, considering that, uh, idea, we can say that the possible total settlement ng foundation natin is equals to consolidation settlement if there is a clay layer plus elastic settlement. Okay? So, total set settlement is ST is equals to consolidation settlement plus elastic settlement SE. But, si consolidation settlement nga is composes of consolidation, primary consolidation settlement at secondary consolidation settlement. So, today, ang i-discuss natin is itong dalawang to. Okay? Primary at secondary consolidation settlement. So, therefore, considering yung relationships na yun, we can say that the total settlement that our structure uh, may have is uh, ST or total settlement is equal to SC. Si SC is uh, primary consolidation. Si SS is secondary consolidation. And syempre, yung laging present, si elastic settlement. Okay? So, yun yung uh, ibig sabihin niya. So, next. Ano nga ba si primary consolidation? No? So, by book definition, primary consolidation is the result of a volume change in saturated cohesive soil because of expulsion of water that occupies void spaces. Okay? So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. Okay? 
Pag sinabi nating compaction, di ba, kung maaalala nyo, we do compaction to reduce yung air. Yes, yung presence ng air dun sa soil particles natin. Siyempre, pag na-reduce yung air, yung strength ng soil natin is mag-i-increase. So, when we remove the presence of air dun sa soil particle natin, we call that compaction. Dito naman, when we try to exp uh, remove yung water, dun sa void spaces ng soil particles natin, we call that consolidation. So, in this case, dun sa primary consolidation settlement, we call that primary consolidation. Okay? So, ano yung formula niya? So, for us to determine, di ba sabi ko kanina yung si primary consolidation is SC. For us to determine yung values or yung possible primary consolidation settlement, ng structure na dinidesign natin, we have to use these formulas. So, maaalin sa mga to. But, we have to check, uh, we have to choose depende dun sa conditions kung mamimit siya o hindi. So, for example, ito yung formula natin na ito. Ito yung SC is equal to CC over H is equal to 1 plus EO log no? uh, parenthesis PO plus delta P over PO. This is for normally consolidated clay. Okay? So, yun. Meron tayong formula for normally consolidated clay. So, mamaya di-discuss natin kung ano yung normally consolidated clay. Or, pwede rin siyang itong formula na to. Kung mapansin nyo, pinagkaiba lang niya. Instead of CC, ito naging CS. Then, the rest are the same. So, this formula is for over-consolidated clay. Okay? So, pag hindi siya normally consolidated, well, of course, it will be over-consolidated. Kaso, kapag nag-fall siya under ng over-consolidated, pwede siyang itong formula na to or itong mahabang formula na to. Again, kung makapansin nyo, ang major difference niya, dito sa first formula na pinakita natin for normally consolidated clay, yung CC naging CS. Okay? Tapos itong last naman, obviously, for over-consolidated clay, mas mahaba siya kung pwede sa dalawa. So, i-discuss natin naman kung ano ba yung normally tsaka over-consolidated clay, no? So, normally consolidated clays are clay soils in which the present effective overburden pressure is the maximum pressure to which the soil has been subjected in the past. So, pag sinabi natin normally consolidated, uh, to make uh, the explanation example, untouched pa or wala pang ipinapatong or kinoconstruct na kahit na ano dun sa uh, site natin or dun sa paglalagyan ng uh, structure natin. As in, wala, wala pang ginagalam, okay? So, para makapag-compute na, na, para makapag-compute natin yung uh, primary consolidation settlement, uh, ito yung mga kailangan na values na meron tayo, okay? Ito yung mga predetermined value na kailangan, aware, uh, meron na tayo, okay? So, okay na, yung pag sinabi natin yung normally consolidated, as in, wala pang ginagalaw doon sa project natin, okay? So, as is, kumbaga, ta tayo yung unang gagalaw, okay? So, ito yung mga predetermined values or dapat available na when we when we check yung primary consolidation. If the uh, sa, clay samples natin or yung site natin is untouched pa, no? So, syempre, we have to know yung uh, Actual force supply dito sa foundation natin, which is force P. Ito yan, no? yung kanina, yung PO, delta P, siya. Ah, hindi, ito siya, ito siya, ito siya, delta P. So, may explain natin kung paano ko nakuha yan. Pero, not necessary, yung CP niya is equal sa dyan. So, definitely hindi. There, there, there is a way to compute yung delta P na yan. Okay? So, ang idea lang dito, syempre, kailangan, alam na natin yung gano'ng kabigat ba yung force na nai-insert ko sa foundation natin. So, saan natin nakuha yun? Doon sa mga sa structural analysis natin, di ba? Uh, yun yung force na directed doon sa, ano natin, sa foundation natin. Put, uh, isolated man yan, uh, di foundation man yan, or mat, di ba? So yun, alam na rin dapat yung gano'ng kabigat yung naka-apply na force na sa foundation natin. So, syempre naman, uh, before we can solve for the possible settlement, kailangan alam na natin yung dimension or yung size ng foundation natin. Pag sinabi natin uh, dimension, yun yung lapad tsaka haba ng foundation natin. 
So, hindi tayo makakapag-compute ng settlement kung hindi pa natin alam kung paano, kung gaano kalaki yung foundation natin. So, again, pag sinabi kasi natin checking yung settlement, ito checking lang talaga to. Kumbaga, may design na tayo, i-check na lang natin kung gaano yung kalalim yung possible na maging settlement ng foundation natin. So, ang idea lang, kapag yung uh, initially na-calculated na dimension ng foundation natin uh, is uh, ang naging result is masyadong malalim yung naging settlement, well, we have to increase pa yung dimensions niya. Kasi ang idea lang, the more na lumalaki yung foundation natin, no? the, the more na lumalapad pala, sorry, yung uh, settlement niya, nare-reduce. Okay? So, as engineer, what we are trying to solve or to calculate is ano yung economic but uh, uh, suitable or safe size ng dimension. Kasi pwede naman natin hulaan nyo na sobrang laki, di ba? Baga, uh, we can design it 3 by 3 pero in reality, when we compute it, no, uh, pwede naman pala siyang 1.5 by 1.5. So, what we're trying to do is to design a safe and economic foundation, okay? So, syempre, isa rin sa mga nakaka-apekto, no? Doon sa settlement ng foundation is yung thickness ng trailer. Yeah. So, gano'n ba kataas or gano'n ba kalalim yung thickness ng frame layer na meron tayo doon sa site natin, no? So, usually, nakikita yan sa soil investigation report. Kung baga makikita natin din yung layering ng soil na meron tayo doon sa project na pagtatayuan natin. So, yan. Kung gano'n yung katik yung clay layer na meron tayo sa site. We have to check on that. Okay? So, next is, syempre, yung sabi ko nga kanina, yung properties ng clay soil, no? Kailangan talagang natin si unit weight, si void ratio, etc. No? So, yun. Yan lang yung kailangan natin para makapag-solve tayo ng primary consolidation settlement if the uh, clay layer natin is normally consolidated or hindi pa nagagalaw. Okay? Okay. Ito yung mga ibig sabihin niya. So, ito yung formula natin for computation ng primary consolidation settlement. SC or primary consolidation settlement is equals to CC. Si CC is the compression index. So, si compression index, uh, makukuha natin siya using this formula, 0 0.009 times LL minus 10. So, si LL, kung maaalala nyo, sa Atterberg limits, this is a liquid limit. So, kailangan pala natin malaman si liquid limit for us to compute yung primary consolidation settlement. Okay? Pero, itong compression niya, sorry, itong compression index na to, actually, uh, we have test na kinakanda para makumpute to. Kung baga, this can be, uh, aside from using this uh, formula, there are other ways para makumpute to, which is yun niya, yung tinatawag natin laboratory kong uh, consolidation test, okay? So, if you are curious kung paano siya kinakandak, uh, there are a lot of videos that can be found in YouTube regarding sa laboratory consolidation settlement, okay? So, ang end result nun is uh, makukuha natin dun yung mga indexes na mag-discuss natin later. So, dito sa case na to, for normally consolidated clay, Ang index na kinukuha natin or kailangan alam natin is compression index which is uh, in which pwede siyang makalculate using the liquid limit or pwede siyang malaman by a conducting laboratory consolidation test. Okay? But I suggest uh, instead of using this formula kung sa actual application na ano, you have to conduct that test. So for problem solving purposes lang muna ano we will use this formula, okay? So, yun nga, uh, new term para sa atin, uh, compression index, okay? So, sa H naman, it is the thickness of clay layer. So, nabanggit ko nga kanina, kailangan alam natin kung ano yung thickness ng clay layer mayroon tayo sa project natin, okay? So, plus, uh, over 1 plus EO, so, EO is in C to void ratio. So, we have to determine kung ano yung void ratio ng clay layer mayroon tayo sa side, Okay? Then next is yung PO. Pag sinabing PO is average effective stress at mid-range, mid-height of the clay layer. Okay? 
Pag sinabi natin mid height of play layer, so ito yung sa figure natin, sa sample problem natin mamaya, no? Ito so, yung play layer natin, no? Ito, 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 ito. ito. Yes, yan, 1.5 meter height na yun, no? Thick, thickness. Pag sinabi natin average effective stress at mid height, Let's say, ito yung 0.75, no? So, it's 1.5 siya, divide natin sa 2.75. So, from this point, hanggang dun sa natural ground surface, kukumpitin natin kung gaano kabigat yung lupa na nakapatong sa kanya from this point. So, ibig sabihin, bigat ng lupa na, yung bigat ng lupa dito is equal so sa clay kalahati ng clay layer plus yung sand na nakapatong sa clay. So, yun yung average effective stress at midnight of clay layer. So, when we compute yung PO, disregard muna natin yung foundation natin. Okay? Okay? So, yun yung PO. Again, from midnight ng clay layer, kukumpitin mo lang kung gaano siya kabigat o ano yung pressure na naibibigay ng soil layers na meron sa ibabaw niya. Okay? Kung baga, kung nandito yung midnight, kumpit natin yung pressure na nabibigay ng sun then yung pressure plus yung pressure na nabibigay no kalahati ng thickness ng no, clay natin so that will be our p or average effective stress okay so next is delta p okay si delta p by the, by book definition is the average increase of effective stress ng clay layer tong delta p dito ang tinutukoy is ano yung epekto no Uh, force applied natin, let's say dito sa case natin, sample problem natin mamaya, no? anong epekto ng 500 kN na yan? Dito, sa mid-height ng clay layer natin. So, once na naglagay tayo ng load dyan, ano yung possible pressure na meron dito sa mid-height ng clay layer natin once na nagtayo tayo ng structure? So, yun lang yung mga kailangan natin gawin. No? So, this sa... Uh, <coughs> This uh, competition for primary consolidation settlement, usually, itong compression index, given na yan, or as long as alam natin yung liquid limit ng soil sample natin, we, we can easily solve it. No? Then, itong si thickness ng ano, clay layer natin, so it, it should be known ano, based on sa soil investigation report. Same with the in situ void ratio. Uh, medyo tricky lang dito, or ang... Um, Itong part na to, yung CC times CH over 1 plus EO, this is more on direct substitution, okay? So, madalas, given na siya, ang kailangan lang natin computein <coughs> is yung average effective stress tsaka yung increase of effective stress no, yung delta P, okay? So, yun, punta tayo sa sample problem natin. So, this is our sample problem for primary consolidation settlement, okay? So, A rectangular putting as shown carried a 500 kN of force. Okay? So, may putting daw tayo. Ang kinikarry niya, ang lumabas sa ating structural analysis, it, this putting will carry a 500 kN of force. Considering the soil profile below, determine the primary consolidation settlement of the putting if the clay is normally consolidated. Okay? So, ito yung soil profile natin. <coughs> So, meron tayong sand layer na 1.5 plus 0.3. Okay? Kaso, 1.5 from natural grid line, meron tayong water table or water surface or may tubig tayo no, sa ilalang ng foundation natin. No? So, medyo hihina yung strength ng soil na meron tayo. Kasi isa pa sa mga given, so yun yan, may 500 kN siya na load na bigat na kinikerry. Sabi ko nga kanina, for us to determine yung possible settlement, kailangan predetermine na natin yung size ng foundation. So, in this case, sa problem natin, ang size niya is 1.2 meter by 2 meter yung haba. So, it's a rectangular uh, isolated coating. No? So, aside from that, syempre, dapat, yun nga, sabi ko kanina, alam natin kung Ano yung soil profile na meron tayo or gaano gaano yung thickness ng each uh, soil uh, group meron yung sa site natin. So in this case, yung sand layer natin is 1.8, yung clay layer natin is 
So aside from that, kailangan alam natin yung mga properties ng soil na meron tayo which is yun niya, yung moist unit weight at saturated unit weight for, for uh, <coughs> sand layer tapos uh, sa clay layer no, yung saturated unit weight niya plus yung kanina yung in situ void ratio which is sa case natin is 0.85 okay? So by conducting under Berg limit it is found out that the liquid limit of this clay layer is uh, 45 so 45 percent okay? So, let's proceed on the computation. So, yan. So, since normally consolidated siya, ang gagamitin natin ang formula, syempre, itong formula na to, which is the formula for primary consolidation settlement if the soil is normally consolidated. So, ito yung mga given. So, kung sino yung formula for normally consolidated, consolidated, uh, consolidated kailangan natin malaman si compression index. But to solve for complete compression index, kailangan alam natin sa liquid limit using this formula 0.009 multiplied by LL minus 10 by the direct substitution of 45 uh, liquid limit na meron tayo kanina. We can say that the compression index, yung CC, no, is 0.315. Okay? So next, ano pa yung given natin? Considering yung soil profile na meron tayo, nakita natin na si clay layer natin is uh, 1.5 meter thick or 1,500 mm thick. Okay? So, okay na tayo dito sa H. Ang next naman is CEO, CEO or si void uh, in situ void ratio ng clay layer natin which is given na rin is 0.85. So, ito madalas, itong mga given na to should be uh, determined na doon sa soil investigation report kapag nagawa tayo sa site natin before we proceed on the design. No? So, ano pa yung mga kailangan natin? Based sa formula, we have to determine yung PO at delta P. No? So, ito yung muna yung solve natin. We have to solve for PO or average effective stress no? dun sa mid-height ng clay natin. Okay, so solve natin siya. Okay, for us to, so, to solve yung uh, PO, ito, okay? itong red dot na to, kukunin natin yung bigat. Uh, disregard nyo muna itong uh, trapezoid na to, no? So, let's focus on this red dot. Okay? Yung red dot na yan, it, re it represent yung mid-height ng clay layer natin. Okay? So, again, sabi ko nga kanina, pag sinabi nating PO or effective uh, overburden pressure dun sa mid-height ng clay layer natin, isa-sum up lang natin kung ano yung bigat na binibigay ng soil meron na yung bigat na binibigay ng soil layer na meron tayo sa site from this point hanggang sa natural grade line. So, mangyayari lang kulin natin yung bigat ng clay layer kulin natin yung bigat ng sand pagplasin natin siya and that will be our PO. Okay? So, yun. Let's solve for our PO. So, ito ang sabi ko kanina <coughs> ang gagawin lang natin for, para malaman yung uh, effective stress dito sa part na to is, yun niya, pagkasamasamayan lang yung bigat, diba? So, Holy shit. Okay, tama. Tama pala. Tama, tama. Okay. So, nag-start tayo dito sa 1.5 na sand, okay? So, from uh, NGL, Multiply lang natin yung thickness ng sand na above water surface. Okay? Ito yun. Uh, 1.5 times yung sand na meron tayo dito. So, after nun, itong part naman na to. Okay? So, ito naman, 0.3 siya, kaso sand pa rin, pero saturated or below siya ng water surface natin. Okay? So, ang idea lang, Ito lang uh, guys, ang idea lang kapag uh, ang soil sample natin or ang soil natin meron tayo sa site is uh, below water surface instead na using natin na instead na gamitin natin yung saturated unit weight niya in determining yung yung weight niya, di ba? We will use the buoyant unit weight which is kung maaalala niyo si buoyant unit weight is it, it equal siya sa saturated unit weight minus unit weight ng water. So, for case nito, 
or from this part water surface hanggang dun sa mid level ng clay layer natin instead of using instead of using 18 lang tsaka 15 lang mamaynosan natin siya ng unit weight ng water which is 9.81 okay times yung thickness nila so in this case yung present overburden pressure niya or yung bigat ng soil meron na nakapatong sa kanya from mid height hanggang dun sa NGL is 1.5 times 16 okay so 1.5 Okay, times 16 kilonewton per meter cube plus 0.3 okay, 0.3 minus unit weight ng water no? plus 0.75 kalahati ng 1.5 times or multiply sa 15 minus unit weight ng water so by <coughs> calculating that PO will be equals to 24 plus 2.4 57 plus 3.893 or 30.35 Okay? So, yun yung natin. So, kanina, kung makalala nyo, ang kailangan natin malaman is si PO at si Delta P. Okay? So, since alam na natin si PO, try naman natin yung solve si Delta P. Okay? So, yun. Pag sinabi natin Delta P, again, change in pressure dito. Or yung nadagdag na pressure sa mid height kasi nagpatong tayo na structure sa ibabaw niya. Okay? So, when we solve for delta P, ang kailangan natin is yung pressure sa gitna. But, hindi hindi siya yung typical na kukun lang natin dito. No? So, we have formula for that. Okay? So, ito yung formula na kailangan natin gamitin for us to determine the delta P. <coughs> Una, kailangan natin makuha yung pressure sa top layer, no? For example, yeah, dito sa example natin, ito yung dito na search yung clay layer niya. So, yun yung top, okay? Ito yung PT. Yung pressure dun sa top na yan, plus 4 times pressure sa middle, plus pressure sa bottom, okay? So, pag sinabi natin yung pressure, syempre, applied load times sa area. So, yung area na tinutukoy dito is yung projected area ng no? foundation na meron tayo. So, ang idea lang, yung distribution ng pressure na meron uh, na pinag-provide ng structure dun sa soil natin na spread out or lumalawak habang lumalalim. Okay? So, ang idea lang, yung epekto ng foundation natin sa soil na pinagkakatayuan niya, the more na lumalalim, the more na lumiliit or na-spread out yung pressure. Okay? So, gagawin lang natin, pagpaplasin lang natin yung pressure dito, times plus 4 times ng pressure dito, plus pressure dito, divide 6. So, parang in-average lang natin, no? Na kung saan, mas nag-govern yung pressure sa middle. So, again, first of all, yung delta P, ito yung kailangan natin kunin, Pressure sa top, plus 4 times pressure sa middle, plus pressure sa bottom. Yung P yan, is equal yan sa applied load P dito over the area. So, ang tinutukoy dyan, yung <coughs> projected area ng foundation sa part na to, projected area ng foundation sa part na to, so, palaki ng palaki yung area na i-divide siya habang lumalalim. Okay? So, sa pag-create ng triangle ng rectangle na ng trapezoid na to ang a-assume natin na pag-spread or yung paglawak ng affected area ng pressure due to kung saan ang sa ibabaw ng soil is 2 is to 1, no? So, lalalim siya ng dalawa, mag-spread siya ng 1, okay? So, dito, for us to determine yung delta P na yan, kailangan natin makuha yung area T or area sa top area sa middle, tsaka area sa bottom. Okay? Yan. Okay. So, let's solve for delta P. To solve for delta P, kailangan natin makuha yung area dun sa top. Which is, uh, kung makapansin nyo, yung projected uh, length dito is 1.2 plus yung nag-spread na length nya sa dalawang side na to. Okay? So, <coughs> Kung mapansin nyo, since yung uh, rise over natin is 2 is to 1, 
ang mangyayari lang, magiging dependent tayo dun sa uh, space between foundation, sa ilalim ng foundation, tsaka dun sa top layer ng no? clay, no? So, for us to determine the area T, ito yung ginawa natin, no? BT, or yung BT natin is equals to 1.2, yun, yung width ng foundation natin, plus 2 times 0.3 plus 0.3 over 2. So, saan ang, saan ang galing yan? Kung maalala nyo, ito yung layo, yung 0.3 plus 0.3 na yan, no? yun yung distance between dun sa ilalim ng foundation hanggang dun sa top no top top, top, top layer ng clay, clay layer natin so yung lalim ng water table natin versus dun sa ilalim ng foundation natin is 0.3 so 0.3 difference nya tas plus 0.3 dito so that will be 0.3 plus 0.3 e kaso kung makapansin nyo dinidivide sa 2 kasi dito okay So, ito kung 0.6 to, yung difference niya, so ano to? Divide mo lang sa 2, kaya din divide sa 2, e eh, kaso dalawa siya, both side, times 2 mo, no? So, mangyayari, 1.2 plus 0.6, parang nakancel out lang kasi din divide to, tapos kina yun sa 2. So, itong BT na to, or yung length, or yung width ng projected, uh, affected pressure side na to, is 1.8, okay? Kaso, isang side pa lang yan. We have what we need kasi dito. Ang consider natin is 1.2. So, consider naman natin yung 2 meters. No? So, ito naman siya. So, same lang din sa kanina. 2 plus, yun niya, 0.3 plus 0.3 divide 2 times 2. So, magiging, uh, ano lang siya. 2 plus 0.6 which is equal to 2.6. So, based on that, makukuha na natin yung area, yung projected area na affected dun sa top layer ng clay, no? So, that will be 1.8, yan, kanina yung napunta ng bit natin, plus 2.6, so that will be uh, 4.68, okay? So, take note lang natin yan. So, ang area na affected, or projected area na affected ng load na to sa top layer ng uh, clay layer natin, or sa top part ng clay layer natin, is 4.68. So, mamaya, gamitin nyo natin sa formula na to na P over area, wherein yung area na tinutuko dyan is <coughs> area dito, area dito, at area dito. So, yun yung kinukumpit natin ngayon. So, ngayon naman, ang kinukumpit natin is for the middle part. Okay? So, for the middle part, yun nga rin, kagaya lang yun yung kanina. So, 1.2, yung 1.2 muna na sa inyo kung consider natin. Plus, 0.6. So, nasaan yung 0.6 na yan? Pinag-plus ko na kanina yung 0.6 na to. Yung 0.3 dito, tsaka 0.2 dito plus kalahati ng clay layer natin which is 0.75 okay so pag sinimplify natin yan magiging 1.2 plus 1.35 na siya so considering yung 1.2 na side ang projected na affected area dito sa mid height ng clay natin is 2.5 2.55 meter for 1.2 so next naman yung 2 meters naman yung consider natin so same lang din yung kanina 0.6 plus kalahari ng mid layer, which is 0.75, that will be 2 plus 1.35, no? Which is equals to 3.35. So, multiply lang natin yung nakumpit natin ganyan na 2.55, plus yung 3.35, magiging makukuha natin is 8.43. So, <coughs> yun niya. Habang lumalalim siya, lumalaki yung area. Ang idea lang, habang lumalaki ng area, lumilit yung pressure, okay? So, next, yung sa bottom part naman, So, considering yung 1.2, that will be 0.6 plus 1.5 over 2 times 2. So, ito na yun, 1.5 plus 0.6, no? Then, times 2 over 2, cancel out, no? So, magiging ano lang siya, 1.2 plus 2, 1. Yung sa side na itong affected uh, area or projected area is 3.33. So, doon naman sa side dito is, uh, ito na kanina, kinumpit na, kumpit na, 4.1. So, yung area sa bottom will be 3.3 plus 4.1 or equals 2. 13.53 Okay So yun Nilagay na natin So area top is 4.68 Area middle is 8.43 8.543 And yung sa area na bottom is 3.53 So Kung makukuha na natin yung PT Yung pressure sa top Pressure sa middle At pressure sa bottom So yan Substitute lang natin yung P Which is 500 kanina 
dun sa mga areas na nakumpit natin. So, dun sa top, 4.68. Sa middle, 8.543. Sa bottom, 13.53. Okay? So, ito yung mga magiging value niya. Sa area ng top, yung pressure na applied sa kanya is 106.838. Sa middle naman is 58.527. Tsaka sa bottom is 13.955. So, bagay ko nga kanina, habang lamalalim, yung uh, projected na effect ng effective ng uh, uh, change in stress na mayroon doon sa soil natin uh, umano siya lumilit okay so there so yan so considering this uh, solve values no magagamit na natin yung formula natin for us to determine yung delta p okay so by direct substitution yun ang binati na 100 uh, 6 kanina falta i-substitute natin sa pt Then, 4 times yung value ng P sa middle plus 13.955 over 6. So, yun niya. <coughs> so, lang natin. Lumalabas na sa delta P is 59.15. Okay? So, yun. At last, using this formula, no, alam na natin si CC o si, si <coughs> compression index. Alam na natin yung thickness kanina. Alam na natin yung void ratio. Then, nakumpit na natin si P o tsaka si delta P. So, yan yung mga values niya kanina. Pwede na natin i-direct substitute siya, no? So, kapag di-direct substitute natin siya, 3.3 times 1.5 over 1 plus 0.85 yung iyo kanina. Then, yung computed natin na 30.35 plus 59.15 plus over 30.35. So, ito yung magiging uh, sagot niya, uh, no? Primary consolidation settlement is 0.255 log of 2.945. So, ano naman ba? May competition. Ang nakuha natin na possible settlement is 0.1198 meter or 119.77 meter, uh, millimeter. So, medyo makakapalas siya, no? no? So, that is too high considering the design. So, <clears throat> ako pang yung design ako, uh, this is, uh, ito yung mga kinakonsider ko. No? For salt clay, ang um, inaalaw lang natin dyan na uh, settlement is, uh, should be not more than 100 mm. So, in this case, it is 119 mm, no? So, kapag nag mas mataas dyan, yung possible settlement na nakumpit mo, ang kailangan mong gawin is laparan pa yung foundation na meron ka. Or kung hindi na kayong laparan yung limited space, meron tayong mga available techniques para ma-increase yung uh, <coughs> bad capacity ng soil natin. So, nandiyan yung magbabawang tayo ng no? Uh, tawag ito, uh, piles no? sa, sa foundation natin para patungan niya. So, ang idea lang, if yung computed na settlement mo is 109, uh, more than 100, uh, you have to make adjustment dun sa size ng limit ng foundation natin. So, in this case, imagine, uh, sabi ko kanya, di ba, ang settlement natin is composed of uh, elastic settlement, no? then conservation settlement, wherein yung si conservation settlement is uh, sum siya ng primary consolidation at secondary. So, in this case, uh, primary pa lang yung na nakukumpit natin, 190 na yung settlement niya. So, it is very unsafe. So, as much as possible, ang gusto natin mangyari is less than 100 mm siya. Okay? Tapos, meron tayong tinatawag na, <coughs> na differential settlement. Kung maaalala nyo kayo, di ba, may nakatilt na structure dun sa picture na pinakita ko kanina. Nakatilt, ibig sabihin, yung foundation niya, nagsettle ng hindi sabay or hindi, hindi pantay. Okay? Pag hindi pantay yun, uh, it's either magtitilt yung buong structure mo or magkakrack yung buong structure mo from top to bottom. So, as a designer, kailangan natin ma-minimize yung possible na difference ng elevation ng bawat foundation natin once na nagsettle individually sila okay so ang inaalala lang natin na possible difference in elevation between two footing is 40 mm okay if halimbawa ito si foundation na to is nagsettle siya ng 100 tapos ito 200 so ibig sabihin yung difference na sa around 100 magka-crack na yun o kaya totally magtitilt na yung structure natin okay so yun lang guys uh, for, for us to complete yung primary consolidation settlement So, yung kanina, yung mga nabanggit ko, kailangan natin makuha yung uh, present overburden pressure at saka yung change in effective stress sa mid-height ng kahilayan natin. Plus, syempre, 
kailangan natin yung compression index, kailangan natin malaman yung thickness ng uh, clay layer na meron tayo, tsaka yung mga basic properties niya like uh, dry unit weight, moist unit weight, or saturated unit weight if my presence na water table dun sa structure natin. So, para malaman natin yung uh, indices or indexes na pag, sa pag-umbit ng settlement like ito si compression index, kailangan nating mag-conduct ng uh, laboratory consolidation test. Okay? So, doon natin malalaman yun. Okay, so okay na tayo sa primary consolidation. Next, jump tayo doon naman sa tinatawag natin na <coughs> Hmm. Tinatawag natin na uh, tag ito, uh, secondary consolidation settlement, no? So <clears throat> Kasi ah uh, yung kanina pala, naalala ko, no? Ah, uh, 'yun kanina normally consolidated lang, no? Pero yung primary consolidation settlement natin, it can be uh, normally or over consolidated clay, okay? For over-consolidated clay naman, meron tayong uh, two formulas na ginagamit which is itong si maikli na kung saan uh, ang napalitan lang is yung from CC naging CS or itong si mahaba na kung saan uh, kamukha rin siya nung kanina kaso mas mahaba. No? So, ang idea lang, we have to check muna kung ano yung gagamitin natin na formula. Ito bang maikli or itong mahaba? So, magbe-base tayo doon sa value ng PO at delta P na na-compute natin. So, dito kapag sinabi nating over-consolidated clay, unlike doon sa kanina, meron na tayong tinatawag na <coughs> pre-consolidation pressure na kung saan ang designation niya or ang annotation niya sa technical engineering is PC. Okay? So, we will uh, discuss this uh, by uh, solving <coughs> Uh, this problem. So, same lang din tanong kanina. Same problem, no? Same given, same soil property, no? Same soil profile. Ang pinagkaiba lang, nagkaroon na tayo ng uh, pre-consolidation pressure na kung saan ito. No? Si 95. Uh, 95 kN per meter cube. <coughs> so, let's read the question, no? Though, same lang din tanong kanina. A rectangular footing as shown carried a 500 kN of pores. Considering the soil profile below, determine the primary consolidation of the putting if the clay is over-consolidated. Since kanina, normally, ito naman over. Over. So, ano yung ibig sabihin ng over-consolidated? Si over-consolidated, uh, kinukonsider siya kapag meron ng structure na naitayo doon, then parang ginibala o tinanggal lang, O kaya naman, yung existing natin na pagkatayo ng structure is dating may tambak, then tinanggal natin. Kung baga, ang idea lang, pag sinabi natin uh, over-consolidated clay, may dati nang nagpapabigat sa kanya. Pabigat, no? Pabigat. So, pwede yung dating structure na giniba, o may backfill dun, or may lupa dun na tinanggal, na kung saan, pagkatanggal dun, syempre, yun na yung dating bigat niya na tinanggal lang. Okay? So, yun. Again, kapag sinabing over-consolidated, may dati ng bigat na nakapatong doon sa lupa na tinanggala. So, dito sa, uh, sa question natin, sinasabi dito na dati daw, doon sa pagkatayo natin, mayroong pre-consolidation pressure ng 95 kN per meter cube. Okay? So, considering this form, this given, no? tsaka mga values na alam na natin, meron tayong pre-consolidation pressure at saka ito, swell index na 0.045. So, itong swell in, index, uh, dependent din ito dun sa compression index na meron tayong maina. Pero again, pwede rin siya makuha by conducting uh, laboratory consolidation test. Okay? So, itong CC is usually nag-range siya from 1 fifth ng CC to 1 tenth ng CC. So, ang idea lang, si CS is laging mas maliit kumpara kay CC. Okay? So, again, for us to solve yung uh, primary consolidation settlement ng over consolidated clay, we have two formulas na available. Depende kung ano yung uh, masasatisfy sa kanya, no? Kung ano yung magsasatisfy. Is it si case 1 or si case 2? So, ang mga uh, 
factors na mga na dapat natin consider is yung magnitude ng PO at saka delta P. I-compare natin siya dun sa pre-consolidation pressure. So, considering this case 1, kuha mo si nyo, si PO plus delta P daw is greater than PC. Okay? So, ano ibig sabihin niyan? Kung si present over burning pressure daw na nakumpit natin plus si delta P na nakumpit natin kanina is mas malaki dun sa present over sa pre-consolidation pressure na meron tayo dito which is 95 ang gagamitin natin is itong formula na to. Okay? But if yung PC is malaki dun sa pinagsamang P o at delta P itong mahabang formula yung gagamitin natin. Okay? So, since uh, same problem nung din naman tayo, ang nangyari lang, naging uh, nagkaroon lang siya ng pre-consolidation pressure. So, pwede natin gamitin yung uh, formula kanina. So, yun. Ito, 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 ito. ito. Yan. Ito nga. Note, soil index CS is used for over-consolidated clay, where CS value ranges from 1 pip to 1 tenth of compression index. Okay? So, si CS, ginagamit natin siya if our clay layer is over-consolidated or may uh, pabigat na or may nakapatong sa kanya na tinanggal lang. Okay? So, let's uh, check kung ano siya, kung case 1 ba siya or case 2. Okay? So, if it is case 1, then we will use this formula yung maikli na pinalitan lang ng, C, ng CS yung dating CC or for case 2, nang saan mas pinahaba yung formula. Okay? Same, same putting, uh, ibig sabihin, uh, same dimension, which is 1.2 by 2 meter, and same soil profile, and yung loading na considered, uh, same lang din. No? So, ito yung mga values na umpit kaya natin kayo na. So, yung thickness ng clay layer is 1.5 meter or 1,500 mm. Yung EO niya or yung in situ void ratio niya is 0.85. Then, ito yung kanina, yung kinumpit natin na medyo mahaba, delta P, is 59.15, tsaka PO, equals to 30.35. So, again, kailangan nating malaman kung case 1 ba siya or case 2. Okay? So, check natin. What is CPO plus delta P? CPO plus delta P is 59, yung kanina, plus 30.35. So, ang total niya is 89.5. Okay? So, i-confirm natin siya sa PC kanina na yung pre-consolidation pressure daw, yung dati nakapatong dun sa lupa, is 95 kN. So, compare natin si 95, 29. So, mas malaki si PC. So, since mas malaki si PC, we will use the formula for case 2. Ang haba, di ba? So, alam na natin yung formula na kailangan natin gamitin. So, ito na yung mga known values natin na na-compute kanina, di ba? Yan. So, alam na natin kanina yung thickness ng clay layer natin. Alam na natin yung uh, in situ void ratio niya. Siyempre, yung delta, pinakompute na rin natin. Ang nadagdag lang talaga is yung pre-consolidation pressure. The rest are the same, then given na rin yung swell index natin. Okay? So, isa-substitute lang natin siya sa formula ng case 2. So, yun siya. Ito, medyo mahaba, no? Hindi ko na isa-isahin. Then, kapag uh, kinumpit natin siya by calculation, lumalabas na yung <coughs> primary consolidation settlement niya is uh, 139 meter. Uh, 0.139 meter or... 139 mm too high. So, mas lumala pa siya sa kanina, diba? So, kanina kasi, mag ilan lang yun? 190s, pag ang alala ko. Okay? So, too high siya. So, again, if it is more than 100 mm, yung naging settlement ng foundation natin, it's about time to adjust yung dimension ng no? uh, putting natin or we have to do something dun sa bearing capacity ng soil na meron tayo. Okay? Okay. Yun lang yung, ano, yun lang yung uh, primary consolidation settlement. Just to give a brief recap, so yun nga, to compute the primary consolidation settlement, kailangan natin i-determine kung normally or over-consolidated clay na siya. So, ang tricky part lang doon is yun nga, kailangan natin malaman yung PO tsaka delta P. So, other than PO and delta P, halos lahat ng, ano, ng property na kailangan natin is, is already given, okay? So, first part pa lang yun, nung settlement, or yung possible settlement ng foundation natin once na may presence ng clay layer doon sa site natin. So, this part is a secondary consol consolidation part. So, kung makapansin nyo, it is a sample ano, uh, tabulation ng result ng no? uh, laboratory consolidation test. So, ito yung result niya. No? So, ang idea lang, kung i-check nyo doon sa, you can search in YouTube no? kung paano siya kinakanda. 
Ang idea lang, <coughs> habang naging increase yung stress na ina-apply dun sa ano natin, sa soil sample natin, nagsisettle din siya or nadideform nag, nag, din siya, no? So, dun sa consolidation settlement, we have three stages. Yung stage 1 is initial compression. Second stage is primary consolidation. Tsaka si third stage is yung secondary consolidation. Sa initial uh, compression, malis, maliit lang yan. Uh, usually, uh, once na nag-start yung uh, test natin, automatic, tanggal ano siya, uh, nag-settle na siya, in the minimal way, parang na... na naalis lang yung excess na airspace dun sa soil sample natin. Dun sa consolidation settlement na yan, o yung pag-deform ng soil sample natin, when we conduct laboratory consolidation test, ang majority ng settlement is due to primary consolidation. Okay? So, itong secondary consolidation, uh, halos minimal na lang siya compared dun kay primary consolidation. Itong primary consolidation, kung maalala nyo, what we're trying to remove here no, is a water or presence ng water dun sa boil spaces. Dito, once na natanggal na or wala nang natanggal na presence ng water, wala nang ma-repel na tubig dun sa soil particles natin, dito sa secondary consolidation, ang nangyayari na is umbaga, sinisiksik or uh, nade-deform na yung, part, soil, yung solid particles natin hanggang sa makompact siya, di ba? So, parang nagkakaroon na ng uh, geometry change or yung sa geometry ng soil particles natin. Kasi tuloy-tuloy yung compression niya eh. So, dito sa secondary consolidation, wala na tayong pinag-uusapan na expulsion ng tubig. Morong deformation na lang ng solid particles na meron yung soil sample natin. So, compare yun sa primary, very minimal na lang to Kung baga, yung deformation niya, bago siya mag... mag Mag, may encounter na uh, uh, the additional settlement parang sometimes it will take years or decades no so very minimal na lang but for the purpose of designing <coughs> we will compute yung secondary consolidation settlement <coughs> so yan by book definition while primary consolidation settlement is due to expulsion of water from void space the secondary consolidation settlement is due to deformation of soil specimen so yun yan Nade-deform na yung soil specimen natin kasi tuloy-tuloy yung ano eh. Kumbaga, <coughs> may presence ng bigat ng structure natin meron dun na, na naya-apply dun sa lupa. Okay? So, this is more on deformation na lang. So, ito yung formula niya. May clear lang, no? So, <coughs> si alpha times H over 1 plus EP log of T1 over T2. So, dito... <coughs> Incorporated na yung ano, uh, time, no? Itong T1 tsaka T2 na to, pinag-uusapan natin ito taon. Okay? Taon. Kung ilan taon. So, C alpha, ano yung C alpha? That is a secondary compression index. So, again, yung indexes natin, makukuha natin yan, or malalaman natin yan, when we do laboratory consolidation test. Okay? So, si thickness, syempre, sa soil profile. Tapos, si thickness na bago, no? Kanina, EO to. O, tabi to. Uh, site void ratio or in situ void ratio for us to determine itong EP na to kailangan natin gamitin itong formula na EP is equals to EO minus delta E so si EO kanina alam na natin ang kailangan na lang natin gawin is si delta E so for us to compute si delta E kailangan natin malaman si compression index tsaka itong PO plus delta P over PO okay so, yun ang yung mga ibig sabihin niya, no? So, ang formula ng pala for secondary consolidation settlement is itong uh, secondary compression index times thickness ng k-layer natin plus 1 plus EP which is if EP, ang ibig sabihin niya is void ratio at the end of primary consolidation. So, after mag-undergo uh, ng primary consolidation yung soil sample natin, at this point, ito yung EP, no? Sa so point na to, kailangan natin ma-predict kung ano yung possible na AP. Okay? So, yun, para makumpit yun, uh, kailangan natin alam yung compression index tsaka yung uh, delta P tsaka PO no uh, structure natin tsaka ng soil. Okay? So, let's go for our example. So, same problem lang din. Same soil property, same loadings, same size ng putting. Ang pinagkaiba lang, <clears throat> ang kukumpitin na natin niya is secondary consolidation pressure. 
So dito lang uh, let let me read first the uh, question no. A rectangular putting as shown carried again by 100 kN no force considering the soil profile below determine the secondary consolidation settlement 2 years after the completion of primary consolidation settlement. Maalala ko nga pala yung tinatawag natin kaya na T1 tsaka T2. Si T1 is yung <coughs> Uh, si T2, sorry, si T2 is yung time after the completion of primary ka consolidation settlement. So, yung time after mag-undergo siya ng primary, let's say from this point, uh, after 2 years, nandito na siya, no? So, yun yung time after ng uh, consolidation settlement. Where si T1 naman, yun yung required na time para uh, matapos tong primary consolidation settlement. So, ito yung deformation from this part to this part, okay? So, considering the soil profile below, determine the secondary conservation settlement two years after the completion of primary conservation. So, in this case, uh, yung tito natin is two, okay? Two years, okay? So, use the C alpha or C secondary uh, uh, compression index na uh, 0 0.022, no? So, primary conservation took one year to complete. So, yung tito natin is one year, okay? So, solution, so using yung formula ka na binanggit ko, yung C alpha times H over 1 plus EP or yung void ratio at the beginning, okay, of uh, secondary consolidation plus yung T1, ito yung time after ng primary consolidation plus uh, pala, T2 over T1, ito naman yung uh, time na kung saan nag-under ko siya ng primary consolidation, okay? So, given yung values kanina, yan na, ang kailangan lang natin isolve is yung EP. Again, okay? So, for us to solve yung EP, syempre, kailangan natin yung formula ito. EP is equals to EO over delta E. So, kaso hindi natin alam sa delta E. So, we will use this formula, CC log, uh, CC log, parenthesis PO plus delta P over PO. Okay? So, actually, direct substitution kanina, di ba? So, kanina, Nakuha so, natin na CPO is 30.35 dun sa sample problem number 1, okay? At CPO si plus delta P is 89.5, okay? So, si CC is 0.315 dun sa soil sa problem number 1 natin kanina. So, by direct substitution, we can compute the value of delta E which is equals to 1.48, okay? So, by direct substitution, makukumpute natin si EP or si void ratio at the end of primary consolidation is 0.705 okay so mga pansin niyo yung void ratio niya from 0.85 naging 0.702 okay so, 702 kanina diba so alam mali ako uh, from 0.85 again is naging 0.702 okay so ang idea lang habang nakokompress or habang tumatagal or habang uh, nagsisettle yung foundation natin yung void ratio natin, palit ng palit ng palit ng palit hanggang sa, actually, impossible, impossible din maging zero siya pero hindi nga lang, palit siya ng palit kapag tumatagal let's say, after 2 years, malamang sa malamang mas maliit na yan, let's say, nasa around 0.6 na lang yan, okay? so, kanina, given na rin yung ano natin, yung secondary compression index, which is 0.722 so, direct substitution na lang siya sa formula ng secondary uh, consolidation, si SS, no? Ang lalabas na SS natin is 0 0.0058 per meter or 5.837 mm. So, very minimal na lang, di ba? Compare nyo sa kanina na 119 at 139, okay? So, pag pinag-plus na rin siya, laki rin, no? Ano rin? Kapag no, normally consolidated, so 119 na sa 124, so malaki talaga. Wala pa dyan yung elastic settlement na yung discuss natin sa ibang video. So, kung over-consolidated clay siya, so nasa around 140 something, 144, 43, ganun. Okay. So, yun, yun lang yung computation kung paano gawin yung, or paano predict yung uh, possible settlement due to presence ng clay layer doon sa ilalim ng foundation natin. So, paano kaya ang clay layer eh? So, once na may clay, we have to compute this or study this topic. Okay. So, actually, itong topic na to, uh, this is for checking nung dinesign natin, okay? So, usually kasi sa foundation engineering, dinidetermine natin 
uh, yung dimension ng foundation natin based, based dun sa shear strength ng soil o dun sa topic na i-discuss natin uh, sooner, yung soil bearing capacity, no? yung tersagi soil bearing capacity. Ang dinidesign natin dun is yung dimension ng foundation or ano yung safe area or uh, area of contact between structure tsaka ng soil. So, once na na-design na natin or na-determine na natin ng area, area, ng yung area na yun, no or yung dimension ng foundation natin, we have to check yung possible settlement. Kung saan, ito yung ginagawa natin. So, again, if yung naka-calculated total, ha, total, total settlement nyo, considering elastic settlement, tsaka yung primary and secondary conservation settlement, is more than 100. You have to uh, increase no, yung dimension natin. Or, isa pa sa mga reason uh, kung bakit natin kailangan ma-check yung settlement ng foundation natin, syempre, yung kanina, di ba? Yung differential settlement, which cause dun sa taping ng ano natin, ng structure natin, or worst case, yung crack ng buong structure natin from bottom to top, no? So, kapag ano nga yun, structural failure, at risk yung pinagkarapan natin ng ilang taon, no? Para maging isang profession. So, kumbaga, kahit anong tibay, no? Kung kahit anong tibay ng beam mo, ng column mo, kung yung foundation mo isablay or bumigay yung lupa na pinagpapatawa ng structure mo, wala rin, no? So, we have to consider din na main factor talaga yung design ng foundation kasi yun yung buhay mo, ano yun, yung structure, eh. isa yun sa mga baga paayan eh, kung wala lang paayan tao, di ba, di makakatay ng mga isya. Okay? Actually, di talaga makakatay eh. So, kanina, ang pinag-usapan lang natin is yung isolated foundation. So, there are cases na kailangan din natin uh, yun kasi isolated yun eh. So, there are problems na encounter natin sa mga review books. So, sa mga sample problems na may encounter nyo during your uh, uh, self-study, no? Na kung saan, uh, meron ng uh, distributed load na nakapat na nakapatong dun sa NGL or sa natural grade, na grade line ng surface natin. So, ito yung ano niya, yung tsura niya. Parang distributed load na usually Ano yan? Uh, kilonewton per meter, no? Ang uh, nire-represent niya madalas is yung mga structure na ang pressure niya is kinukonsider natin per meter length, okay? So, isa ng R dot is yung kalsada, okay? So, kapag ganyan, yung per meter, uh, uh, force per, meet, per meter length yung given, ang kinagandahan niyan, we have to do the same uh, uh, procedure kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina to compute yung PO pero yung delta P niya, instead na magawa tayo ng patrapezoid as is na siya so ang delta P para sa mga problem na ganito is yung delta P na mismo nag dun sa problem so no need to solve for delta P is equals to pressure sa top plus 4 times pressure sa middle plus pressure sa bottom over 6. So, no need na. So, direct substitute mo na, ito na yung delta P. So, ang kailangan mo na lang gawin is yung PO. Okay? So, mas madali kapag ganting problem kasi wala ka nang i-compute na delta P. Okay? So, ginagamit to, madalas yung acto yung nangyayari itong distributed load na to, no? Kapag ang kinukumpit natin na possible na mag-settle is yung uh, uh, ayan, kalsada, di ba? Mga retaining wall, mga dam, no? Yung pressure per meter length, no? Per one meter strip, di ba? Lagi nyo natin dinig yun sa fluids, tsaka sa bawa. <coughs> sa strength. Okay? So, discussion summary. So, ito yung mga ina-expect natin na ma-define kanina, di ba? So, define soil compressibility and foundation settlement. So, yun niya. Yung sa soil compressibility, ang pinag-usapan natin dito is paano magre-react yung soil natin once na naglagay tayo ng uh, bigat or structure doon sa ibabaw ng soil natin. Well, well of course, makakompress siya and since nakompress siya, yung foundation natin magsisettle. So, ano yung nangyayari? Nagkakaroon ng settlement due to presence ng, syempre, ng load ng bigat and presence ng clay, no? 
Kaya pas, the more na nakakompress yung soil natin, the more na mas malaki yung possible settlement. So yung mga factors affecting uh, compression, soil compression and foundation settlement naman, yun yan, nabanggit ko kanina, syempre, the more na mas malaki yung load, mas malaki yung settlement. The more na, <coughs> the more na, in case na may presence ng clay layer dun sa, ilalim ng foundation natin, the more naging mag magiging mas malaki yung settlement ng foundation natin. In case na may presence naman ng water, no? presence ng water dun sa ilalim ng foundation natin, mas malaki magiging settlement. Okay? Tsaka, syempre, yung properties ng soil na meron tayo. Okay? Next, yung definition ng primary consolidation, primary consolidation settlement. So, pag sinabi natin yung primary consolidation, it is parang, ano, nagsisettle or nakakompress yung lupa natin dahil we try to dahil natatanggal yung, yung presence ng water doon sa void spaces wherein dito naman sa secondary consolidation <coughs> nade-deform na yung mga solid particles natin no? kasi doon sa presence ng yeah, stress increase na nakapatong sa kanya okay? so yun lang uh, quote of the day uh, we see the world not as it is but as we are or as we are conditioned to see it. Hello, no? So, <laughs> ang idea lang, uh, actually, it is from uh, Seven Habits of Effective People, no? From, by, ano, uh, Stephen R. Kubi. So, this is one of my favorite book. So, if you're interested, pwede nyo siyang i-check. Uh, parang, itong book na to is uh, eye-opener for you to be successful. I'm not saying that I'm success successful, no? But, I'm on my way, okay? So, kung sinasabi niya lang dito, nakikita natin yung, yung mundo kung paano natin siya gusto makita. No? So, yun lang yun. Uh, if you want your life to be happy, then see the world. No? So, nakadepende na, 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 na sa perspective ng tao. No? Toxic yung life mo, then create in a toxic life. Yun lang. Everything depends on your mindset, okay? So, kung hindi ka, if you find this um, uh, tutorial or lecture uh, knowledgeable or nakakatulong sa'yo as engineering student or si graduates, your likes and subscription is highly appreciated para sa pag-grow ng ating community, okay? So, I hope you guys learned something from this lecture and uh, wait natin yung mga sunod nating topics. So, later on, uh, tutorial ko kayo ng uh, mag-design foundation, isolated putting, as well as yung retaining wood. Okay? So, I hope you guys doing well, and God bless us all. Thank you!